Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. Today I thought we'd break out the log cabin set again and build a small but heavily decorated build up in the northern forest region. So let's jump in. Okay, so yeah, hanging out in the northern forest region today with a little sort of multi-level cabin build. I really like how this one's come out. It's intended to be small, cosy, and really kind of carried by the decoration, although it's got a pretty interesting shape as well. So let's have a look at where we are. See, right up here in the northwest corner. It's a little cabin just there. See, we are just by the road there, down from WV Lumber Co., which is about as far northwest as you get. There's Darling Sisters Lab. Up down this way, you can see Tyler County Fairgrounds there. So right over by the river here. Nice little spot. So I've built here before, quite a while ago now, but uh, I do like this little corner. So here we go. A nice little gap in the trees right next to the road here. Good little spot. The shadows make it a little difficult to see what you're doing sometimes in the forest, but uh, it is what it is. I'm sure you'll be able to see well enough. Starting off, as per usual, <laughs> with the foundations. We're going to basically start with the part that's going to be the inside of the building first, although we will be adding porches onto this afterwards in a little bit. One thing that's a bit odd about this spot is it's kind of deceptive. The ground slopes away down towards the river, which I suppose is not particularly surprising, but it looks flatter than it actually is. So a little bit of effort's going to have to be made here to make this look good. Otherwise, we'll have a large amount of the foundation showing over the grass and it won't look particularly good. So hence why we've kind of got a multi-level build going on, but it works. So we've got this more or less positioned in. We'll drop that one down. So this is going to be sort of where the front aspect is, so... I want it to look as good as possible from the road. The backside, not quite as good looking, but uh, it's all about that front view, really, this one. So, got these last couple in. This is the internal section, three by two. We're going to have another part of the building off to the side here. That's uh, going to be, again, three by two, I think. But uh, we'll tweak that a little later going forward. Let's get this floor the right way round. Add the rest of them in here. A little bit of trial and error required in this spot to figure out exactly where you want to position things, but uh, I did that bit off camera so we can speed things along a bit. That was basically the layout of the main building. Let's get some porches on the front here. Mostly using the log cabin set here, but I will be picking a couple of other bits and pieces as well just to make it a bit more interesting. Get those porches on. The idea for this one actually came from some log cabins that I saw on Instagram, but uh, kind of looked at uh, about half a dozen different ones and took some basic design cues from them and then falloutified it. But uh, yeah, the internet is absolutely covered with really cool ideas for log cabin builds if you're looking for a little inspiration. So I've dropped those two extra foundations on the front there that uh, I had previously taken out. They're going to be changed out for farmable dirt tiles during the decoration phase, but uh, it'll require shortening the length of the building to do that. I'll uh, show you a bit more in a second. We'll get some walls in for the moment. There we go. Unfortunately, these windows don't fit with any of the curtains we have, which is a bit of a pity, but uh, we'll have to make do. End result looks pretty cool. So, putting staircases in in spots like this can be hit or miss. Sometimes about the only thing you'll fit in is the concrete ones. In this case, it was a little more cooperative. It seems to be almost entirely random as to whether or not it's going to work. The biggest problem is because we've got that wall on the right, which I can now take out and I can get the stairs in, and it will go back in, but sometimes it just decides, nope, not today. So it kind of depends what building set you're using, where you're building, how it looks, so on and so forth, but uh, try it and see if it works, I guess, is the takeaway from that. In this case, went in just fine. Sometimes putting a doorway in there will let it snap when another wall piece won't as well. So just a bit of trial and error and see what works, basically, is the case there. In this case, it works just fine. I should snap that staircase in the wrong way around, and now because the walls are in, it's being awkward about moving it. So we'll whip these couple of walls out that are actually connected to it, and then we can arrange it into the corner there. I'd like it to go across the end there, where across the wall where the doorway is, but because uh, I've got that bottom staircase in to go from one floor to the other, it won't snap in over the top of that, so on the angle it'll have to be, which is fine, it works out in the end. A couple of floors in here. Incidentally, these are the wrong way around to match up with the staircase, but I uh, didn't find that out until I changed them out in the decoration place. No biggie. And we're going to go for half walls around this top section so that the building's not overly tall. These half walls have two different uh, styles to them on the log cabin set. You can see they've got a thick beam across the top on this one. There's one where it's the same thickness all the way up. 
Going for the other one is a better bet. I'll change it out in a minute, but it, it does look a little better with the particular roof set I'm using. The log cabin set, not so much, but here I'm using the haunted house roofs as I wanted a slate roof on this. So uh, in that case, the ivy that hangs off of it, as you'll see in a moment, kind of clips through the thicker beam. So I swapped them out afterwards. We'll get to that in just a moment. Once we've plugged up these gaps, there we go. This is our upstairs. I'll have to close that back corner off there as it'll need to be a bathroom later, but I'll do that in the decoration phase. It's dead easy to snap a couple of walls in there. So there you go, you can sort of see now that we're clipping through with the uh, ivy that hangs down there. So we'll change it out. Still not quite perfect. I mean, these aren't meant to go together, but it works. Obviously those windows are not looking great, but fortunately in the last update, they added a version of the roofs that doesn't have the windows in. So we'll change that out. Well, you can see that looks significantly better. I'll do the back half on my own time. So for this section, we're going for half pipe walls again, basically because I want to keep that building height down a little bit, make it look a little bit more cabiny and less like it's towering up, up above the ground there. So it does mean that when you come to decorate, you'll have to mess around with the roofs a fair bit, take them off uh, some things and uh, put them back in before you put other bits of furniture in. There's a bit of a build order nightmare, all those things snap up on top of it, but it does work out okay. And again, as I said before, this building's going to have to be shortened down a little bit. It's currently one set of foundations too long in that direction we were just looking. So I'll bring that end wall in one and replace them with dirt tiles in a bit. So here, I'm going to swap this wall out for a half height one and stick the roof on again. It's just going to look a little bit better, look a bit more interesting and uh, just fit with the rest of the build better. I did, however, originally put this slanted roof at the top, you can see, which means using one of the angled walls in this gap. Now, that took some doing, and I decided it didn't look that good anyway. So, see, I had to pull out a lot of stuff I'd already put in just to get this slanted wall to sit on top of the roof here. But uh, I ended up changing it out because it just kind of stood out too much and uh, detracted from the rest of the shape of the building. So I replaced it with a flat roof, but I did that during the decoration phase. It's much, much easier to do. You can see I had to faff around a great deal here to get that angled one in. So you can sort of see how I did it in the first place before I changed my mind, but uh, we'll skip through it quite quickly so that you, you don't spend too long watching me do something that I didn't stick with. But that's more or less how it worked the first time around. There we go, as I say, I'm going to bring this end wall here in a little bit, but again during the decoration phase, so that this last set of foundations will be dirt tiles on the outside. We'll head back outside. We're almost there with the structure now. Yeah, you can see that slant up in the corner there. That's definitely going to look better if I just make it flat. It just sticks out a little bit too much as it is, whereas when you make it flat, it kind of blends in a little bit more. But that's the basic structure. I'm going to put a couple bits and pieces on there now. We can use those dirt tiles to kind of hide the walls in the decoration phase. Put some crops on there, which is practical from the point of view of having crops on there, but also, as I say, the blank surface of the wall looks a little a little bit much, so adding crops in front of it will kind of hide that a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting to the eye. It's getting a little dark now, but last couple of bits and pieces, get these railings on. And we'll just stick a staircase in here, so in transition a little bit more neatly in a moment. So I ended up using the contemporary one here, but you're better off with the haunted one. It just blends with the log cabin set a little bit better. But that is the core structure together, so let's decorate and have a little look around the finished tour. So there we go. Early morning tour for this one as the build basically faces east, so we want to make sure we've got sunlight on there, such as we can with all the trees and stuff. Yeah, it looks really nice as you come up the road, just it's on the road edge there, a little bit back. A nice cosy build. There's a few extra trees that I've added around, not as many as you might think, but I've added a couple just to kind of draw the forest in a little bit. We've gone for fall trees as they match most of the other ones around here. And uh, it just, yeah, brings the trees in, brings the forest in a little bit like the place has been here for a while and the trees have had a bit of time to grow back. So kind of like that. Got the barbed wire fences out there and a few brambles around again, just because when you build the grass starts to disappear and it doesn't look too fantastic. So adding a few brambles in there just kind of brings the wilderness, the wildlife back in a little bit. Same on this side as well. Well, it looks a bit more natural on this side. A few extra bits and pieces dropped around, like the truck bed there and stuff, just to make the thing look a little bit more lived in, a bit more complete and interesting. We'll take a little pan around the back here. 
not too much going on at the back here as uh, it's you know out of sight and there's not much cause to come around here put a little gate on the end there it was kind of manually placed in same with this one here this little gate had to be manually placed in and bounced on the top step there as it won't snap with the steps in because it's helpful like that but i needed somewhere about out the back here for my generator and for my electron as well see the back of the cooking station coming through the wall there but a little bit of extra decoration for those rare occasions when i will run around here yeah, with the cooking station, I basically turned that wall into a door, put the pipes through the door, and then converted it back to a wall again, so that it would sit a little bit more snugly to the wall. You'll see when we get inside. Take a little pan back around the outside again. The cage bulb lights from Daily Ops hanging around the outside there. I really like those things. I've got about a bajillion plans for them, but they're really, really handy. They create a nice little warming glow, a little orange glow to everything, and they quite helpful for a few different things and they look good along the porches like this as well the scarecrows out there to draw any fire if they do get any wasteland denizens visiting also dresses it up a bit as well not too sure about those oil lamps out front and maybe a bit too much but i needed something i think to mark the gate as well so there we go loads of decoration out here a few bits of brambles and stuff just around the well and kind of concealing the shelter entrance in there Got some use out of those wall planters as well. Quite happy about that. Little pumpkin area. And you can see we've cut that front edge of the building back a little bit there. Got the dirt tiles in, got some crops in. Just to dress it up, kind of conceal the flat bare walls a little bit. So it looks a bit more interesting. Got a few lanterns in and amongst the crops as I usually do. Just to give it a little bit more illumination at night. Make the whole thing look a little prettier. Swing down towards the little balcony patio porch area here delete as appropriate <laughs> nice little place to hang out a couple of rocking chairs a few extra benches decorations a bit minimal out here but it can be hard to make it look sort of right or at least for me anyway but a uh, little area down at the end here to tuck the player vending in i didn't want it to be too in your face because it kind of wouldn't blend with the rest of the build i also wanted it to be reasonably findable for anybody who visits so Nice little spot down there, a few bits of decoration. Those uh, suitcases and stash boxes as well, in case anybody needs them. We'll head on inside. I've got an ally in here, so I did actually have to lock the doors, as you know what they're like for leaving them open. And I'm sure you know by now how I feel about people leaving my doors open. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, visitors I will have to open the door for, but I do like the inside of this place. Nice and cosy, fairly standard vibe for me, but it looks all right. Nice little area to hang out here. Had a fun little incident while we were sat there before, so uh, if you haven't checked the socials out, you should do, because that's quite entertaining. I've gone small on most of the furniture in here to make sure there's enough room to move around, because there's not a lot of space in here, but it works. The build size overall is quite small, so it does fit in nicely. Little kitchen under the stairs, you can see where I've got that cooking station working through the wall there. A couple of bits in the corner as well. The Tipsy Tom vendor set for those sort of counters there, the worktops on the left. There's Catherine Swan's little desk. Let's head on into the crafting area. So yeah, this came together really nicely. I like that I've got the benches sticking out from the walls and stuff. It's something I like to do on a fairly regular basis. It makes the space feel a little bit more full. Obviously, the stuff nearest the walls was a bit of a nightmare because the roof's so low. So the roof had to come off before that went in. Whereas the stuff down the middle, the Simtomatic at the back there and the Power Armor Station, I had to put the roof on first and then put those in. Because uh, I didn't have the problem with it jumping up, but I did have the problem that the roof thought it was colliding with it, so I couldn't put the roof on afterwards. So a lot of build order work going on to get this particular room decorated, but I do like how it's come out. Got dungeon floors on the go, lots of little bits and pieces of sort of scrappiness around. Access to all of the workbenches we could need in here. Difficult to fit a power armor station in this build, which is why it's smacking the center there, but it works. You can pass through it if you need to, and you can still use it as well. Plenty of decorations, little bits and pieces of accent around on there. That decontamination arch was a bit of a nightmare to fit in, because it's so close to the height of the roof, so... A little bit of fiddling with that was required to get it to go in where I wanted it to, but... It worked okay in the end, a little persuasion. You can see the flat roof at the top there that I swapped out as well. Yeah, just about everything we need. It goes in nice and cosy. Pop back into the main house, close the door there. 
This one is going to get smack in the way now, because that's what allies do, apparently. <laughs> but we'll manage. We'll take a little turn around and head upstairs, have a look at the bedroom. And the bathroom as well. Just about big enough for two people, this place, so uh, just having an ensuite works fine. A little seating area there. I think I should probably put a lamp on that table or something like that, but uh, it's a nice little dressing table. Bed tucks in quite nicely there as well. Loads of little plushies, including some of the new ones that I picked up the, on their return to the Atomic Shop this week. I did want to have some stuff on the top of those chests of drawers, but they prevented the roof going back in. And again, yeah, I had to take the roofs off to, in order to decorate up here and then put them back on afterwards. You can see it closed this corner off and just squeezed the bathroom in there. Swap the floor out as well. Very basic. I've gone for the dirty stuff in here because we don't have a clean bath yet. Still. <laughs> One day, I hope. Fairly simple. Should probably put that table in the other corner, but it works. And a little cage light in there just to illuminate the place. I'll close that. That's the haunted house doors I've used there, by the way, for the inside, as they're a bit nicer than some of the other options we've got. Or a separate item in the atomic shop around uh, Halloween. So there we go. We'll take a little swing back downstairs before we have a quick whip around here in the evening, as the lighting in here is quite nice at night. Yeah, I do like this place. Cozy, homely, everything you need as a play at home sort of functional camp as well. But yeah, nice. I like it. <laughs> it's the sort of thing that I really enjoy doing, little builds like this that are really sort of intensely decorated and detailed. In terms of the budget, I actually had a tiny little bit left. Maybe um, a tenth, maybe something like that of the budget left, but there was a bit left over, which is nice. Especially given how much stuff I managed to cram in here, which is always cool. And you got a little bit of headroom, it's always nice. So I'm going to have a little turn up to the road there, and then uh, we'll switch over to the night tour, which is much briefer. <laughs> but yeah, I actually did the night tour first, because I had to record this really early in the morning so that you get a decent bit of daylight around. Fortunately, the sun pans around in the day, and then the trees really block a lot of the light, so I wanted to have a decent bit of daylight for the look around here. But yeah, because I recorded that one first, as is often the case, I spotted a couple of things that I hadn't done prior to recording, so see if you can spot them on the way around. But yeah, really like how this has come out. Very much like the forest is sort of growing back a little bit around this nice little log cabin in here. And I like having it right by the road as well, it's a nice little sort of front approach to it. And uh, when the place gets attacked, most creatures tend to come down the road towards it, which makes them a lot easier to find and spot. Oh look, there's a couple in the distance. <laughs> So here we go, I'll shuffle on down a little bit and have a look in the evening. Top half of this is kind of dimly lit in the evening, but the lower section is really nice, warm and welcoming, and I do like how it's come out. As you walk up the road, it sort of slowly becomes visible through the trees as well, it's a really nice little effect. Pop on inside. Not to uh, get hit by the gate. Yeah, the little lamps inside the crops are adding a little bit more illumination. There's a couple of spots in here where the lighting's a little bit too bright, but in most of those cases it was kind of needed, otherwise something would have looked like it was missing, or in the case of the vending area, it would have just not been easy to find in the dark at all, so... I needed to make that a little bit brighter. Yeah, there you go, you can see it down the end there. A little bit of Blue Ridge decoration and the obligatory vault boy. I'll head on inside when I actually figure out how to operate a door. <laughs> a little difficult with no UI, that. <laughs> there we go, nice and cosy in the evening. I did actually drop an extra lantern just in the corner of the kitchen there, because it's a little bit dark in that corner. But otherwise, quite nice in here and cosy. Head on through to our little crafting room. Yeah, nice and cosy in here, kind of... Um, I like the way the metal's reflecting all the orange light as well on the, the crafting benches and stuff. It looks really cool. Nice little atmospheric room. Bit dingy, but, you know, homely, I think. I like it a lot. And the orange lighting works quite well with the uh, sort of pine log cabin building pieces as well, so that's always nice. Wouldn't look right if it was too bright anyway. Not in my eye, anyway. Take a little turn upstairs and have a look around up there. Yeah, 
could maybe have done with an extra lamp on this end, I think, a little bit, but I could possibly do that after the fact, seeing as, as I say, I've got a tiny little bit of budget left. I did actually forget at the time I recorded the evening tour to put a light in the bathroom, so uh, it's a bit dark in there as well right now. <laughs> but as we saw before, I added it before the daytime one. So there we go. I like putting the little screen there around the edge of the stairs. It'd be nice to be able to put an actual railing on these, because they, otherwise they look a little odd, I think is probably a good word. A little dangerous, but yeah, do quite like how that looks. So, let's head on out. This time I'll try not to hit myself with the door. <laughs> it's really cool to come back to this place when you've been sort of adventuring and then uh, you see it in the evening. I do like this one a lot. So, there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I'd be very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video, you can find social media links, merch store, and channel memberships as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, I very, very much appreciate it. And if you get a chance, do join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76, and we're playing Control at the moment as well, which is good fun. I hope you join us for that. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.